10 on Sports Central will be going over our next final prediction of this offseason, and it will be over the Oklahoma Sooners. And this is a team that went 12-2 in 2019, all around a great season for this team, making it to the college football playoff and winning the Big 12. But how will they do in 2020 is what we're going over here today. We're going to be going over your returning production for the next season, along with a full prediction on this team's schedule and a full preview in the process. So with that, let's look at your season trends from 2019 for this team. Of course, they were 12-2 overall. And they're 7-1 between September and October, along with 5-1 between November and the postseason. So, yeah, a big reason why this team was so good last season was because of how consistent they were. I mean, as you can see, they had a lot of close games below, but this team overall uh, was able to win a lot. I mean, they were very consistent throughout the entire season, uh, not taking any bad losses. And, yeah, they had a couple of really big wins down the stretch. Of course, they beat their rival Texas 34-27 on October 12th. He also had a big win against Iowa State, 42-41 to on the 9th, and that could have been a huge upset there uh, for Iowa State. I mean, they, they almost won it in Norman. Uh, that would have been a crazy game there. But, of course, Iowa State, they, they've been kind of a sneaky team over the past couple of seasons. Um, of course, I remember a couple of years ago, they actually, I believe they upset Oklahoma. Um, so, of course, that was that was a close one there. But, yeah, they were able to get a win there. They also had a win against Baylor on the road, 34-31. to And that was a huge win there. Of course, Baylor at that time in the season was on fire and, and they were able to repeat that in the Big 12 championship game against Baylor. They won that game in overtime, 30-23. to So once again, all around, great season for Oklahoma, going 12-2. and And yeah, even though the college football playoff didn't really turn out as well as they'd hoped, of course, they got blown out by LSU. But still, I mean, we, don't, we all know how good LSU was last season. But all around, once again, just a great season for Oklahoma. Looking at your returning production for the next season, of course, they lose their big-time starting quarterback, Jalen Hurts. And he was a pretty good quarterback last season. Of course, he transferred in from Alabama after the 2018 season. And he put up over 3,800 yards with 32 touchdowns and eight interceptions last season. So he did put up some really good stats. And I certainly think, I mean, if I were to pick between him and Jordan Love for the NFL draft, me personally, I would have picked Jalen Hurts in front of him. I mean, I would have taken Jalen Hurts in the first round of this NFL draft if I could have. Um, he ended up going in the second round, I believe. But still, I mean, that's still a good draft pick for him. Spencer Rattler looks to be this team's next quarterback. Of course, he, I believe he's a five-star quarterback uh, coming in, and it looks like he's going to be it's, it's going to be his first season next year. So, yeah, he's going to have a lot of ex expectations. Of course, Oklahoma has been very good as far as the quarterbacks go over the past few years. I mean, if you look at the past three seasons, they've got three NFL quarterbacks. You got, of course, Baker Mayfield in 2017. You had uh, Kyler Murray in 2018. Now Jalen Hurts. Yeah, this team's done really well with the quarterbacks, and I believe that's going to continue next season. I mean, Spencer Rattler's looking really good heading into next year. He's got, um, of course, he's one of the most highest or one of the highest rated quarterbacks in the entire nation heading into next season. So, yeah, watch out for him for sure. But they'd also return their starting running back, Kennedy Brooks, which that's going to be a big return as he had just right around 1,100 yards with six touchdowns last season. Uh, so, yeah, Kennedy Brooks, no doubt on my mind that he's going to be uh, one of the best running backs in the Big 12 next season. They do lose their uh, their other running back, Trey Sermon. He transferred to Ohio State, and he didn't have a big impact on this team. Of course, he had 450 yards and five touchdowns last season, but um, still, I think he'll be a good impact on Ohio State. But it's good for Oklahoma that they still have Kennedy Brooks in there. They also lose their top wide receiver, C.D. Lamb. Of course, he went pretty early on in this NFL draft. He had 1,300 yards with 15 touchdowns last season. So, uh, yeah, rightfully so for C.D. Lamb. He's a great um, a great wide receiver, and that's going to be a tough loss for this team. But good thing is they do return their second wide receiver in Charleston Lambeau, uh, Rambo, which he had just oh, yeah just over 750 yards with five touchdowns last season. They also lose their third wide receiver in Lee Morris, which he had 330 yards and a touchdown last season as well. So uh, this this receiver core does take a couple of big hits with C.D. Lamb and Lee Morris, uh, but it doesn't concern me all that much. They've got a good recruiting class coming in with a couple of good receivers as well. Uh, so overall, this Oklahoma team, even though they're going to be a bit younger next season, I still think they've got a ton of talent on this team. They're going to do just fine with what they have there. As far as the offensive line goes, they lose one there. They also lose one on the defensive line and two linebackers. They also lose one in the secondary. So this defense loses a pretty much uh, just an average amount of starters. They lose four uh, overall. So yeah, for Oklahoma, still a lot of great returning production. This team's looking really good heading into 2020, in my opinion. And once again, even though they're going to be younger, I still think they got a good shot at the college football playoff. Of course, it usually happens where the Big 12 champion goes to the college football playoff. Of course, it's been Oklahoma for the past few years, uh, but I definitely think that could continue. I mean, of course, you got to go undefeated in the Big 12, but um, I think that Oklahoma could definitely do that next season, no doubt. I mean, their schedule really is not all that terrible, so I think they could genuinely make a run at it. 
And I'm not quite sure whether they'll make it or not. I mean, there's a lot of good Big Ten teams on the rise right now. Um, but I think Oklahoma definitely has got a good chance to put up some uh, to put up some big games and put up some big potential uh, to go for the college football playoff next season. As far as your schedule looks, you start off the season against Missouri State on the 5th of September. And then you got a big game against Tennessee. That game is going to be huge. Uh, it's going to be very, it's going to It's gonna have a huge impact on both Tennessee and Oklahoma seasons. I mean, yeah, that's going to be a big one there. The good thing is for Oklahoma, they do have it in Norman this year. Uh, so that will help a ton. But yeah, you got Army on the road on the 26th. Then in October, you got Baylor to start it off with. And then you got Texas, of course, in a neutral location on the 10th. Then you got Iowa State and Oklahoma State, followed by TCU to finish off your October. So, yeah, your only bye week is kind of, it's kind of rough for Oklahoma, of course, because they got a really, a really early bye week this year. They've got it on September 19th, uh, which is just right in between weeks two and three. So that does concern me a little bit, of course. I'm, I mean, I know with most teams, every team prefers to have their bye week at some point in the middle to later part of the season. And yeah, for Oklahoma, unfortunately, it has to be at the beginning of the season, but. I mean, they still have got a lot of talent, so I wouldn't have to worry about that. But in case, in the case that injuries do become a problem, that could come to bite Oklahoma a bit. But I wouldn't worry about it too much right now. As far as your November goes, though, you got West Virginia to start off with on the road, followed by Kansas State, Kansas, and Texas Tech. So yeah, your October is looking pretty tough. That's going to be a very tough month. I mean, all five of those opponents are going to give Oklahoma a good fight, I think. Uh, but your November is looking really easy. I think November is going to be a huge blow through for Oklahoma. But yeah, as far as your September goes, I'm going to give you four wins. I think you beat Missouri State, Tennessee, Army, and Baylor. I think all four of those games are genuinely um, easy to win there. Of course, Missouri State and Army, I think you'll get easy wins there. So I expect those to be by over 14 points. But yeah, the Tennessee and Baylor games, I do expect those two to be closer games. Uh, I think that Tennessee game is going to be very impactful to both sides. I mean, especially for Tennessee. I mean, looking at how they were last season, they improved a ton over the year. I mean, they weren't great, but they improved a ton. And so I think for Tennessee, uh, they've got a lot of upside heading into 2020. If they can get off to a fast start, and if they can get a big win against Oklahoma in week number two, I mean, watch out for Tennessee next season because they could have a huge season. But, um, yeah, as far as that game goes, I think Oklahoma wins it mainly because it's in Norman and also because I think Tennessee may be, uh, may be a little bit rusty at the beginning of the season. Of course, they're still a team uh, that is kind of young. And so I think for Oklahoma, having more experience than them, that will help them as well in that one. As far as that Baylor game goes on October 3rd, I think you get a close win there as well. Once again, the highlighted or the game's highlighted in yellow or to represent your close wins. And I think you get a big win against Baylor there. And as far as the rest of your October goes, I think you go 3-1. and one. I think you get a big win against Texas, but I think you lose to Iowa State. Um, and that one's, of course, Iowa State's always given Oklahoma a big fight over the years. I think with that game being on the road and also being after uh, two pretty tough games against Baylor and Texas, I think Oklahoma is going to come into that game kind of slow, and I think uh, they'll start off kind of slow in that one, and Iowa State's going to start off fast. And um, Yeah, overall, I just think Iowa State in that game has got a – I mean, they've got a couple of better games to go into that game, but I mean, I think in general, Iowa State definitely is a team that could put up nine wins next season. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me a single bit to see them be a big contender uh, to get to the Big 12 championship. I think they're going to be right up there with Texas and Baylor – uh, to get to that opportunity. Of course, Oklahoma State, you can't forget about them as well. And they're actually Oklahoma's next game. And I think they get a win there, but I think it's going to be close. Uh, once again, I mean, Oklahoma State's a team with uh, a pretty decent quarterback, great running back. But I think um, I think overall, I think Oklahoma gets the win because they're at home. And that's going to help them a ton there. That TCU game could be tricky too, but I think Oklahoma gets it done in that one. They get an easy win. And then you're going into your November with a 7-1 and one record. And I think you just absolutely blow through your November. I think November is a very simple month for this team. I mean, you got West Virginia on the road, which I don't expect much out of them. So you get a win there. Then you got Kansas State and Kansas, two teams that I think will, well, Kansas State especially, I think they'll decline quite a bit next season. And then Kansas, of course, they're going to be a blowover team. And then you got Texas Tech on the road to finish off the season. That should be a win as well. So all four of those games, I'm pretty confident Oklahoma will get wins in. I think your record prediction for next season is going to be, we're going to be 11 and 1. I mean, I think you're going to 11 and 1 no matter what. It's just a matter of what uh, team you're going to lose to. I mean, I think you're going to lose to at least one team. It's just tough to say which one. Uh, I think, I mean, that Texas game is going to be tricky too. Can't forget about that. Um, that Baylor game could be could be a tough one. Same with the Tennessee and Oklahoma State games. But the main reason why I think you'll beat Tennessee, Baylor, and Oklahoma State is because all three of those tough games are at home. And so I think you'll be, I mean, if you if you have to come down to two games, It'd be either Texas or Iowa State that they would lose to. But I think, with once again, with Iowa State being on the road 
in the middle of October after two pretty tough games with Baylor and Texas. I think they just have to take a loss there. And yeah, the prediction is going to be 11-1 and though once again. I think Oklahoma makes it to the Big 12 Championship again next season. Wouldn't surprise me a single bit to see them win it. But unless that about wraps up our final prediction on Oklahoma. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below on this team. Also, let me know if you have a different record prediction. But yeah, once again, thanks for watching again. As always, be sure to stay tuned for more content from All Sports Central. And I will see you all later.